We recently spent eight nights aboard Crystal Cruises Crystal Serenity, sailing from Quebec City, Canada to New York City. This was our third cruise aboard Crystal Serenity. But what's even more interesting is that each time we've sailed on this ship, the cruise line has been under different ownership. So is this new Crystal Cruises as good as the previous one, or even the original Crystal Cruises? This video is sponsored by Generations Visa Service. Hello cruisers, and welcome to another Cruise Report Cruise Review. Today, we're going to give an overall review of our recent sailing aboard Crystal Serenity. I always like to start with a brief personal history so you know a little of our background. We've been reviewing cruise ships since 2002. In the past 21 years, we've sailed on 142 cruises across 41 different cruise lines and 113 different ships. We've sailed on small ships holding as few as 18 guests, all the way up to mega ships with more than 4,500 people, and everything in between. Now, I only mention this to establish that we have a fairly broad background in the cruise industry, and we feel qualified to review ultra-luxury cruise ships. I also like to mention that we're not travel agents and we're not affiliated with any sellers of travel. We stand nothing to gain financially if you choose to book a Crystal Cruise. Also, Crystal Cruises is not sponsoring this video and they did not pay us to make the video. We do, however, have a sponsor for this video and that is Generations Visa Service. A brief history of Crystal Cruises will help to lay some groundwork for this review. The brand was originally launched in 1991 by a Japanese company as a luxury cruise brand. And under that ownership, Crystal racked up an impressive number of awards and became a leader in luxury cruising. In 2015, the company was sold to Genting Hong Kong, by 2021, the pandemic had taken a toll on Genting Hong Kong and its subsidiaries, one of which was Crystal Cruises. Genting's financial troubles led to an eventual bankruptcy and led to their two largest cruise ships being seized by Bahamian authorities. Crystal Serenity was actually only one week into a world cruise when this happened, but all of that is a different story for a different type of video. So let's fast forward to June of 2022, when the Crystal Cruises brand, along with two ships, Crystal Serenity and Crystal Symphony, were acquired by Abercrombie & Kent, also known as a k a luxury travel company with an excellent reputation. It just so happens that in 2019, cruise industry pioneer Manfredi Lefebvre purchased 80% of ANK. Now, in case you don't know who Lefebvre is, well, he is the former owner of Silver Sea Cruises, which was founded by his father. So why the history lesson? Well, after watching this review, you might be interested in booking Crystal Cruises, and given the recent history, you might want to know who's running the operation now. In our opinion, there is nobody better suited to lead Crystal Cruises than a &K under the direction of Manfredi Lefebvre. He probably has more experience in the luxury cruise industry than anyone living today. Crystal Serenity entered service in 2002. She's 820 feet long with a gross registered tonnage of 68,870. She is the newer and larger of the two current Crystal ships, with Crystal Symphony being her smaller and slightly older sister. When the ship originally went into service, she was configured to carry 1,040 guests. After the recent refurbishment in 2023, she now carries only 740 guests and has a near 1 to 1 crew to guest ratio. 
at a time when most cruise lines are trying to figure out ways to cram more people onto their ships, Crystal Cruises is doing just the opposite and giving their guests more space per guest to enjoy. What's even more amazing is that 80 to 85% of the crew are returning Crystal Cruises employees. When we first laid eyes on Crystal Serenity docked in Quebec City, she looked exactly as we remembered from 2015. As we stepped on board and walked around the ship a little bit, we could immediately see evidence of refurbishment. It should be noted that some of the changes we noticed actually took place in 2018 when the ship was refurbished under the previous owners. So the top deck, Deck 13, is accessible by either the forward or aft elevators and staircase. There are actually three banks of elevators and stairs, forward, midship, and aft, which is a really nice feature on a ship this size. Deck 13 forward is an observation area, and when you move aft, you'll find two paddle tennis slash pickleball courts. All the way aft, you'll find the renovated Aurora Spa and Salon, and an updated fitness center with all of the latest cardio and weight training machines from Technogym. Deck 12 forward is the location of Palm Court, the largest and most elegant lounge on the ship with extensive views of the ocean. Palm Court appears as it did in 2015 with little if any changes since our last cruise. And this is where afternoon tea is held each day, and in the evening you can enjoy live entertainment and dancing. Just aft of Palm Court are the Waves Teen Center and Fantasia Children's Playroom. Now, we didn't see any children on our cruise, and Crystal really doesn't hold itself out as a family cruise line. If there are enough children on board, they do bring on special staff so the kids' area can be open. Midship on Deck 12 is the Seahorse Pool, which appears unchanged since our last sailing. The pool is quite large, and there are two large hot tubs at one end of the pool. One thing interesting to note is the lack of a pool bar. There is no outdoor bar per se on Serenity. If you're lounging around the pool deck, waiters will bring you your favorite beverage, so you don't have to worry about that. Just aft of the pool, you'll find Tastes Kitchen and Bar on the starboard side of the ship. On the port side, you'll find Trident Grill and Scoop's Ice Cream Bar. All the way aft on deck 12 is the location of the ship's buffet restaurant, Marketplace. Tastes Trident and Marketplace all appear as they did in 2015, with no obvious changes since our last sailing. Decks 11, 10, 9, and 8 are all guest staterooms and suites. Now, there are some guest staterooms on Deck 7 forward, but midship on Deck 7 starboard side, you'll find the Computer University at Sea, and on the port side are the studio, the library, and the vintage room. All the way aft on Deck 7 is where you'll find two specialty restaurants, Umi Uma, which is an Asian-inspired restaurant by world-renowned chef Nobu Matsuhisa. When we were on board the ship in 2015, this was called Silk Road. While the name has been changed and the space completely transformed into a more modern, light, and casual-looking restaurant, the menu has remained relatively unchanged. I should mention at this point that this will not be a review of the food and dining. I'm going to have a separate video for that, and I'll go into great detail on all the restaurants and our experiences in each one. Next door to Umi Uma is Osteria, an Italian specialty restaurant that resides where Prego used to be. At Osteria, everything has changed. The entire space has been refurbished with a new elegant decor, and the menu is completely different from Prego. The best feature of Deck 7 is the full wraparound teak promenade deck, which you rarely find on newer cruise ships. This is an excellent place for your morning or evening stroll, or just for sightseeing. The deck is spacious, and the teak decking is in excellent condition. However, 
there's not a lot of seating around this deck for some reason. Deck 6 forward is where you'll find the Galaxy Lounge, which is the ship's main theater. We cannot really tell any changes to this space since our last cruise. This lounge has unobstructed sight lines, but there's not much of a slope in the seating area, so if someone tall sits in front of you, they could obstruct your view. One of the biggest changes to Serenity during the most recent refurbishment was the removal of the ship's casino on Deck 6, just aft of Galaxy Lounge. This space has been converted into what's called the Lounge, with what appear to be card tables and some seating. Now, we found this space to be a little bit confusing, almost as if they haven't really decided what to do with it yet. Midship on Deck 6, you'll find the shops overlooking the atrium, offering everything from high-end jewelry, watches, clothing, and some logo gear, but not much in the way of logo gear. The Bistro on Deck 6 midship appears to have been refreshed and looks nice and new. Continental breakfast and afternoon snacks are offered here from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. each day. Farther aft on Deck 6 is the Hollywood Theater, which plays host to various lectures and movies. And this is a great venue for watching movies. This space also appears to have been untouched during the refurb. I can honestly say that nothing appears to have been refurbished aft on Deck 6. On the port side is Pulse Nightclub with a decor that harkens back to the disco era. On the opposite side of the ship is Avenue Saloon, which was always our favorite quiet spot to enjoy a cocktail. This space also looks a bit tired and in need of a refresh. The same can be said for the Stardust Club, which is the farthest aft interior space on Serenity. This is more like a traditional cruise ship show lounge, and it's used for some smaller shows throughout the cruise, and even is transformed into a supper club one evening with entertainment and an elegant dinner service. All the way aft on Deck 6 is an outdoor sports area with golf driving nets, a putting green, and two table tennis tables. Deck 5 is the lowest guest accessible deck on Serenity. This is where you'll find the ship's medical center. Moving aft, you arrive at Crystal Plaza, which is the ship's main atrium. The concierge, guest services, and shore excursion desk are located here, as is the Crystal Cove, another very popular and elegant bar. Aft of Crystal Plaza is the location of the Waterside Restaurant, the ship's main dining room. The space is completely different from what we remember back when it was the Crystal Dining Room, and apparently the space was renamed and refurbished back in 2018 or 2019 under the previous ownership. This space is modern, light, and airy. We really liked it. We'll talk more about Waterside and all of the restaurants on board in our food and dining review video, so make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you don't miss that video. When it comes to activities and entertainment, we found the lounge acts to be very good. The ship seems to rotate solo performers at venues such as Crystal Cove and Afternoon Tea. One day it would be the violinist, another day the pianist, and even a DJ playing recorded music on other days. There were some guest entertainers on our cruise. Bruce Hammond performed a Salute to Sinatra show one evening that was very good. There was a comedian one evening, but we didn't make that show. We did make two of the production shows featuring the Crystal Serenity Ensemble of Singers and Dancers. There were four vocalists and six dancers in the group, and all were excellent. While the stage and lighting in the Galaxy Lounge are not quite up to the state of the art, the choreography and the talent of the performers more than made up for it. One of the production shows was set to recorded music, 
while another one featured a combination of live orchestra backed up by recorded tracks. It's kind of unusual to even find live orchestra on a ship this size, and it was a welcome surprise. The musicians were very talented. Veteran cruise director Rick Spath has more than 18 years with Crystal, and we feel he did an excellent job with the evening entertainment. You saw him everywhere around the ship, and he was always greeting guests and chatting with them. Crystal always had a great reputation for excellent lectures, and that reputation is alive and well. We enjoyed several lectures during this cruise, and all were very informative and quite entertaining. We also like that Crystal broadcasts their lecture series on the stateroom television, so if you miss a lecture, you can always watch it recorded later on. Another area where Crystal excels is in the selection of computer at sea training classes. During our eight-day cruise, we attended two classes on the subject of iPhone and iPad tips and tricks, and both were quite informative. Now, one area that we feel could have been better was Team Trivia, which was only offered on sea days, and we would like to see Team Trivia every day. We tried bar service in every bar on the ship, and it was excellent throughout. I'm pleased to report that Crown Royal and Canadian Club were offered throughout the ship, two brands that I've had a hard time finding on other lines. Ricky tried her favorite lemon drop in three different bars, and all were excellent. And the complimentary wines offered on board include 55 different labels. The included selection of spirits, wine, and beer should satisfy just about anyone's tastes. Happy Hour canapes were also offered in the Crystal Cove and Avenue Saloon. We only did one ship excursion, which was whale watching in Gasp Bay. While the excursion was fine, it could have been explained better in the ship's excursion literature. We were not forewarned that the whale watching tour would be in a zodiac and that we would have to put on rubber jackets and pants since we would likely get wet from splashing water. It also should not be recommended to people with back or neck issues as the zodiac ride can be quite rough. The number of excursions offered was also quite limited. Now this might be a result of the places we visited or the cruise line's rapid return to service in 2023. It is possible that these local tour operators book their tours with the cruise lines a year or more in advance. Now, I suspect that moving forward, the number of excursions offered will dramatically increase. As I mentioned before, we'll be posting a full in-depth review of the food and dining on board Crystal Serenity, but I am going to give you a brief overview. First, I'd like to give some important information regarding passports and visas, and that brings me to our sponsor for this video, GenVisa.com. If for any reason you find yourself stranded in a foreign port or country without a passport, well, let's just say it's going to be a bad day. We recommend anyone traveling outside of the USA on a cruise or otherwise have a current U.S. passport. But getting a passport can be time-consuming, quite a hassle dealing with government agencies, and it can take several weeks to get your new or your renewed passport. That's why when it came time to renew our passports this year, we went back to Generations Visa. We used Gen Visa 10 years ago when we got our previous passports, and we were so pleased with the experience, we didn't even consider any alternative when it was time to renew. We downloaded the forms right from their website, FedExed everything to them along with our passports, and within 10 days, we received our brand new passports, which will be good for 10 more years. In addition to passport services, Gen Visa can also provide you with any necessary travel visas. And many countries around the world require a visa, such as China, Brazil, Russia, and more. Rather than going to various foreign consulate websites and trying to figure this all out for yourself, Gen Visa has everything you need right on their website. 
Gen Visa delivers fast, easy, and secure expediting of passport and visa applications, and they even offer same-day issue for urgent applications. I can highly recommend that you let Gen Visa guide you through this process of obtaining a foreign visa or a USA passport. So, what about food and dining? Without going into the details of every meal and every venue, I can tell you in this video that the food and dining aboard Crystal Serenity was as good as, and in some cases, much better than we remembered from our 2015 sailing. Is Crystal Cruises a good value? That's going to be different for every person. Certainly, this is an expensive cruise. However, it is a luxury product that can be easily compared to Silver Sea, Seabourn, Regent Seven Seas, you name it. Crystal Cruises is at the top tier of luxury cruising. And your cruise fare includes all gratuities on board, all meals, all beer, wine, and spirits, one complimentary meal in Umi Uma, and one in Osteria, 24-hour complimentary room service, butler service in every stateroom category, and twice daily housekeeping. When comparing Crystal to other luxury cruise lines, you might want to consider that this is a 68,000 plus ton ship with only 740 guests at max capacity. By comparison, Regent Seven Seas Explorer carries 750 guests, but with a gross tonnage of only 55,000. Silver Sea's newest ship, Silver Nova, only carries 728 guests, but with a gross tonnage of only 54,700. Now these are only numbers, but they might indicate that Crystal Serenity is going to offer a higher space to guest ratio than competing luxury brands in this segment. And as you will learn in our other review videos on dining and accommodations, Crystal is offering some of the best in the luxury segment. So by luxury cruise standards, yes, Crystal Cruises is a good value. Overall, the ship is exactly as we remember, only better. The biggest improvements have been in the refurbished suites, which I'll cover more in my stateroom review video. You can see a lot of effort was put into the specialty restaurants and the carpeting throughout the hallways. We love this new guest hallway carpeting. From the outside, the ship certainly does not look her age. The interior of the ship, on the other hand, is a mix of old and new. Some areas, like the public restrooms, Avenue Saloon, Stardust Club, and Pulse Nightclub are way overdue for a redesign and a refresh. All of the other areas of the ship look either brand new or they're so well maintained you'd never know they're not new. The ship is the perfect size in our opinion for a luxury ship. It's large enough to offer all the modern amenities you expect, but small enough to be very easy to navigate. And did I mention the amazing updated suite accommodations? Most cruise lines do a great job with crew service, but Crystal is next level. The attention to detail when it comes to personal service is over the top. Now here's just a few examples. When we boarded the ship on embarkation, there was a 25 to 30 foot section of the gangway that was uncovered and exposed to rain. A crew member with an umbrella escorted each guest across that gangway so they wouldn't get wet. Ricky forgot to pack her Apple Watch charger and we were unable to find any stores selling them in any of the ports we visited. When she mentioned this to our butler, Rao, he returned that evening with an Apple Watch charger that he got from another crew member and insisted that Ricky use it until the end of the cruise. Now, I could give you a half a dozen more examples just like that. So if you're a previous Crystal Cruises enthusiast, I think you're going to be very pleased with this new Crystal Cruises. Everything you loved about Crystal Cruises has been carefully maintained, except for the casino. I always keep a list in the back of my mind of our five favorite cruise ships, and now that Crystal Serenity is back in service, one of my current five is going to have to move over to make room for Serenity. 
First, I'm very happy that Crystal Cruises is back in business. And second, we are extremely pleased that they're now owned by A&K because we know that company has unmatched experience in the luxury travel segment. I would not be surprised to see a couple more Serenity class vessels in the future, along with some smaller expedition oriented ships. We thoroughly enjoyed our eight days aboard Crystal Serenity and can highly recommend this ship and this cruise line. As far as demographics, I would say the average age on our cruise was in the 40 to 55 range. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up because that really does help out our YouTube channel. If you have any specific questions about our time aboard Crystal, please put them in the comments down below. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching this long video. And until I see you next time, smooth sailing.